moeilijk. Je mee zou. Tuesday, June 25th, 2024. Kenyan youth dubbed Gen Z demonstrate against the finance bill 2024 managed to breach security and gain entry into the parliament leading to chaotic and unprecedented scenes. At least four protesters are shot dead as police struggle to disperse rioters who had stormed parliament following the passage of the controversial finance bill. Several others sustained serious bullet wounds during the violent confrontations. You see, when Gen Z dubbed their demonstrations as Occupy Parliament, many did not anticipate the little occupation of Parliament presence, one of the most protected zones in the country. Fast forward to August 2024, the gas seemed to have died out. The bubbling heat of the demo seemed to have fizzled out and this begs the question, why? Why has the heated Gen Z demos lost its team. Stay tuned. My name is Mzimels and welcome to Zimax Media's Stay Walk series. Let's jump straight into it. The unlikely alliance between President William Ruto and opposition leader Raila Odinga has brought a surprising calm to the Gen Z protest that once shook Kenya to its core. The political partnership, which many thought impossible, appears to have successfully quelled the fiery demonstrations that culminated in the storming of parliament on June 25th, an event that led President Ruto to take the drastic step of sacking his entire cabinet under mounting pressure from the youth. In the wake of this protest, President Russo was compelled to make a series of significant concessions to address the growing unrest. Among the most critical was his decision not to sign the highly contentious Finance Bill 2024, which had sparked widespread anger among the youth. The bill, which proposed a series of new taxes, was seen by many as a direct assault on the already struggling population. And listening keenly to the people of Kenya, who have said loudly that they want nothing to do with this Finance Bill 2024, I concede and therefore I will not sign. The President's withdrawal of the bill marked a major victory for the Gen Z protesters who had fiercely opposed its passage. In a further display of responsiveness to the mounting pressure, Ruto made the unprecedented move of dismissing his entire cabinet a drastic measure that underscored the severity of the situation. In line with the powers given to me by Article 1521 and 1525B of the Constitution and Section 12 of the Office of the Attorney General's Act, decided to dismiss with immediate effect all the cabinet secretaries and attorney general of the Republic of Kenya, of the cabinet of Kenya, except the prime cabinet secretary and cabinet secretary for foreign affairs and diaspora affairs. And of course, the office of the deputy president is not affected in any way. This sweeping action was seen as an attempt to placate the enraged youth and signal a fresh start in his administration. The president's decision to send his cabinet home was a clear acknowledgement 
of his government's failure to effectively address the concerns of the country. This shift in focus was widely interpreted as a direct response to the demands of the protesters, who had called for greater attention to the nation's internal problems. In contrast to those earlier tumultuous days, the most recent planned protests, such as Occupy State House, Occupy JKIA, and Nane Nane, have largely fizzled out with little to no significant action. The streets that once uh, steamed with anger demonstrations are now mostly quiet, reflecting a notable shift in the approach of Gen Z activists. We can't let it pass. We want to reject it completely. And that's why we're here. It's our duty to protest. In the initial wave view. of protest, even President Ruto's strongholds in the Rift Valley, Eldoret, uh, Kericho, Nakuru and Kitale weren't uh, spared from unrest. Similarly, Raila's political bases in Kisumu, Siaya, Migori, Homa Bay, and other counties including Mombasa, Kilifi, Kwale, Kakamega, Bungoma, and Nairobi were scenes of significant turmoil. However, the intensity of these demonstrations has dramatically decreased, with the latest protests barely making a mark across the country. This newfound calm has been widely attributed to the political deal brokered between Raila and Ruto, which saw the president give key cabinet positions to four of Raila's close allies. Raila's two deputies in ODM, Hassan Joe and Weekly for Paranya, have joined the cabinet, along with ODM chairman John Badi and National Assembly Majority Leader Opio Andai. Additionally, Beatrice Asko, an ODM member, was also nominated to the cabinet. This House approves the appointment of the following persons. Ms. Beatrice Askul Moy as the Cabinet Secretary for East African Community Affairs and... Further cementing the political detent between the two leaders. Peter Kagwanja, a political scientist, believes that the Gen Z protests are now undermined by the recent appointments made by the President in key areas where the protests were happening. I will quote, the protests have been quelled down by the recent appointments from the main opposition areas and now the Gen Z's in those areas are not going for protest, making the initial coordination by the Gen Z shaky, uh, Kakagwanja says. Herman Manyora, a political analyst, however, believes that the Gen Z's have not relented and are only watching, warning that a bigger storm is yet to be seen. He faulted the government for neglecting the demands of the electorate by appointing the same old faces to the same cabinet. I'll quote, the government hasn't listened to the Gen Z's demands and so the storm is growing. They have only gone back to re-strategize and will soon come out, said Manyora. Makweni Senator Dan Manzo say the Gen Z's had not quelled their protest. He says the recent Nanyanane protest did not materialize due to the massive deployment of police officers who barricaded main entrances to the CBD. I'll quote, The Gen Z's have not calmed down. It is just that the police seem to have mastered the tactics used by the young generation, said Manzo. Even Kimori, a Gen Z advocate, is however convinced that the Gen Z's have been left wallowing in a miasma of desperation, anxiety and confusion. I'll quote, there was energy and passion, but without a structured approach and leadership, it was only a matter of time before the momentum was lost. We lacked a unified voice, he said. By Fidel Mogaka for the Standard Media and also by Capital News. Ami Gaim Zimals, what do you think? Why has the heated Gen Z demonstration fizzled out? Till next time, stay woke. Peace.